Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Our text for today comes to us from Isaiah, chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Well, Happy New Year, brothers and sisters. I've already prepped you for this, that it's not January 1st, it's not October 1st, you know, the new fiscal year for the government, it's not July 1st, the new fiscal year for a lot of businesses, and it's not any other sort of first, in fact, it's not even December 1st, but it is the first day of the new church year, the first Sunday in Advent, and so we now begin to prepare to prepare to remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That miracle by which God became flesh and bone like you and me. It is a promise that was realized unto us, the promise of which Isaiah spoke in our text today. And his time really wasn't all that different from our own. If we were to think about it, are we living in a modern Judah? Well, how is it that Isaiah speaks about the Judah of his day? He says they have become a sinful nation, as God declared in Isaiah chapter 1. And this faithful city, Jerusalem, has become a whore. Where there was righteousness, there is now murder. And the leaders, those princes, are rebels and companions of thieves. Bribes abound, and the people are hungry for money. There is no justice. Well, how much are we like Judah. Has this once faithful nation become a whore? Well, it isn't really fair for us to call this a faithful nation. The United States isn't Israel. We were not blessed to be a blessing for others. But is our nation nevertheless a whore in the way that Isaiah meant? Have we not collectively as a nation turned away from God? Is not God being shoved aside, forcibly removed from the public sphere? Do we not rationalize and justify the murder of babies in the womb? It still is murder. And of course, we make jokes about corrupt politicians we make jokes because it's better to laugh than to cry because we know that many of them have thieves for companions. And we pass campaign finance reform almost every year because, you see, bribery is a problem. And if there is one thing that we have seen in the Black Lives Matter movement or the Blue Lives Matter movement or the All Lives Matter movement, if we've seen one thing in all of this, it's that justice is in doubt. Now in his righteous anger, God punished Judah, but he did not wipe them off the face of the earth. And thanks be to God that he left a remnant, a faithful remnant through which he would fulfill his promise. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. Isaiah spoke of the latter days in which the mountain of the house of the Lord would be established as the highest of mountains. And that, brothers and sisters, is faith. It is our faith. For, for Isaiah, it was a faith in the Messiah who was to come. 
But you and I, it is faith in the Messiah who has come, Jesus Christ. And the Christian church is that highest of mountains, as we hear in Acts. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. But from Isaiah's perspective, when he spoke of these latter days, he saw them as one as one singular event. And in a way, it is actually one event. For Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ is with us now, even unto the end of the age. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. But you see, there is a third part that we speak. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And that is the second coming. And so these latter days in which we live are not actually the end. We, like Isaiah, are waiting. And we, like Isaiah, must be faithful and trust in God. And all the nations shall flow to it, and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, there is power in God's Word. Chiefly, it is the power to create, for that was the very manner in which everything came into being. God said, and so it was. Light, heaven, land, stars, oceans, and all the creatures of land and sea. But this power is not limited to creating the physical. The Word also creates faith. And it is faith that saves. Let us turn again to Isaiah in chapter 55. He says, The Lord spoke, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. See, God's grace comes to us in four ways. In the spoken word, that is to say, in preaching, in baptism, where the word and the water cleanse us of original sin, in the sacrament of the altar, where we are given the true body and true blood of our Savior Christ Jesus, whose word makes the bread and the wine his very body and blood. And by the power of the keys, which includes, as the Lutheran confessions declare, the mutual conversation and consolation of brethren. My brothers and sisters, when you confess Christ, either by your lips or by your hands through the good works that the Holy Spirit has given you, there too is the power of the Word. As Isaiah said, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And so also we say, Come. Come, friend, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Come, stranger, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Come, mortal enemy, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. God's grace and forgiveness are for all people. 
We recall also the closing words we speak when we confess our sins. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. We echo the words of Isaiah, for it is in this holy house that we are taught his ways, and by the power of the Holy Spirit we are led to walk in his paths. The church, this house of the God of Jacob, is Zion out of which the law is to go. And by law, we do not simply mean the Ten Commandments or the law of Moses. For the law contains the whole of Scripture, the entirety of the Christian faith. This is to go out, to go forth from the Mount Zion. And this church, This congregation of believers must be resolute and uncompromising in proclaiming the true Christian faith that is revealed to us only through Scripture. There is no higher criticism, no method by which man should or could rightly put his reason above God's and make his reason superior to God's word. You see, God means what he says, and he says what he means. And when it's important, he says it a lot more than once. Isaiah continues, He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The Messiah, Christ Jesus, he is our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting Father, and our Prince of Peace. And Jesus will decide the disputes for many peoples, for he himself is our peace, as Paul proclaimed in his letter to the Ephesians. He has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. But our world is not yet fully at peace. The swords have not been beaten into plowshares, and the spears have not been turned into pruning hooks. In fact, the sword still swings from nation to nation, and now in this century, it even swings from the terrorist to everyone. No, our world is not at peace. But we have peace. We have peace, and it is given to us by Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And even though we may not always feel at peace, because the old Adam is still fighting, still kicking and screaming, shouting words of doubt and fear and hatred, even as you drown him daily in your baptism. But he cannot win. Like Satan, he has already lost the war. And so I say to you, O house of Jacob, come, Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The Messiah is coming. It is Advent. And we know with absolute certainty that our Savior lives. He was born, true God and true man, and He existed. He is real. And He is here. And we will celebrate His birth in 28 days. O come, O come, Emmanuel. 
And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.